Welcome back to my channel, Use of Skills, Wilson here. Um, so, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, definitely a lot, a lot to talk about, about the PS5. I'm sorry this video is late. I'm sorry I'm all like grangy and stuff. I've been up for four days because of this election thing. I'm in the U.S., so it's been stressful, but hopefully things will get better. Now, um, we got to talk about the PS5. Um, also, I'm going to be doing an unboxing video on Tuesday. Hopefully Tuesday. I can get it out by Tuesday. Hopefully I get the console by Tuesday because uh, I got it from Amazon, the Xbox Series X. So it's going to be an unboxing for the Xbox Series X. I'm going to go over you know, some stuff, and I'm going to also try to plug it up and see how it plays and stuff like that. And um, so you guys are going to get to check that out. But uh, I don't get the console until Tuesday, hopefully, if Amazon delivers it on time. And then the PS5, hopefully, again, by like Thursday, I'll have it. If I don't, then, you know, I mean, they did send an email, it might be delayed. So if it's delayed, then it might be a little bit later for you guys. But today we got to talk about a lot of stuff because uh, reviewers and other people have really gotten the console. And um, have really gone deep, dived into it, reviewed games even, like Spider-Man and... Um, Astro's Playroom, which is great, and then, again, they're getting great reviews. Uh, so, but there's a couple things, a couple rumors, some of them are rumors, and some of them are, like, real issues that some people might face with the console, so I just wanted to go over it in case you're thinking of getting it, and just so that you know, these things exist. But all of this stuff in the future, I feel, will be fixed. It's just a, a launch issue, but it's still an issue at launch, so we gotta talk about it. So, let's get started here. So, there have been some rumors about the PS5 overheating. And, um, really, it's just, it was this, the, it was this display right here that you see in front of you. And, um, it, it was at a Best Buy. And, basically, this console is the one that they said was the one overheating. But, really, because it's encased in the glass, most people are like, well, obviously, if you encase it in there, it's overheating. But, this console is actually not the one that's even, it's not even on. That's just a display. There's a console that they have actually under this display that's connected to this, or behind it, I think, uh, I'm gonna show you right now, that actually makes sense why it's heating up. I mean, they put it in a close, very close space. So it says right there, your PS5 is too hot, turn your turn off your PS5 and wait until the temperature goes down. So a user basically put this up on Twitter, and I have the link right here, uh, about this, like they were at a Best Buy and they saw this. But if you look at the uh, other pictures of someone that I think I might work there maybe, and they, they, you know, unloaded the PS5. So if you, if you see it right behind the TV, it's actually behind the TV, when they lift it up, that's where the PS5 is in this enclosed area. So obviously if it's this closed in, look at all the wires very kind of close together and stuff. There's no, there's like a little fan right here for ventilation. There's really no ventilation in here. And so maybe there's like another fan over here, but like, you know, and all the vents are back here. So it's like really... What did they expect? They, they like ultimately this definitely is heating up. So really, uh, all the other reviewers that have it, they put it in a display on like a regular TV stand or something like that, very open. So they didn't really have any issues with it heating up. Same with the Xbox Series X. Um, there were rumors of it heating up, but apparently it's not. Like it gets hot, like any console would, but it doesn't overheat or you know give Red Ring of Death like the old Xboxes did. So there's no real merit to the heating up uh, console rumor yet so but really if you leave your console in an open area it should flow naturally and it should be okay if you enclose it like either this case or like in this case definitely then yeah your ps5s or your xbox series x's are definitely going to get hot and it's it's going to be a problem all right so that's rumor dispel now the other thing was the playstation 5 dualsense controller um now i've had a chance to uh play with it a little bit i can't really play um play with it on, on, on other consoles, it's only for the PS5. Some videos, or seen some videos, of people talk about um, basically uh, how it feels, and it is really uh, an, an amazing experience. Uh, people liken it, or akin it to the feeling of uh, throwing, uh, um, throwing the axe in the God of War games. So, like that, whenever you got that first feeling of doing that, is how you're gonna feel with this, but like 10 times better. So a lot of people um, really enjoy the controller's feel. And to me, this is a knock at uh, Xbox because really their, their controller, it is a little bit better. Like the grips feel good and the, um, the buttons for the, the D-pad feel good. I have had a chance to have the controller, but I haven't, I haven't done an unboxing for it. But I'm going to do it quick together with the Xbox so it's even better. But, um, but basically, uh, the controller is more or less the same as the last generation. It's just a little bit 
they made it a little bit more ergonomic, like you can hold it a little better, and it's a little uh, easy on the triggers and stuff like that. But ultimately, the PS5, by far, this controller feels completely different from the other one, and uh, it really le it's leaps and bounds different. Than, and I really feel like more consoles should head in this direction, because it really feels like you're really playing the game, from what I've heard. Um, okay, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, all of the stuff, the bells and whistles that go into this controller do make it so that it does take a lot of battery life. So people are reporting that the DualSense lasts about two hours if you play Astro's Playroom, which is comes installed already into the PlayStation 5, and it's basically to show off all of the stuff that the controller can do. So it, it really, like, pushes it to the max. So hopefully that's why it's taking so much life, but hopefully with a firmware update or something, they'll be able to fix that, or I guess a new version of the controller somewhere down the line in the future. But for right now, just know if you're using all the bells and whistles on the controller, it, I guess, lasts up to two hours, around two hours, and then you got to charge it. That's why uh, in my unboxing, if you guys, you know, check that video out, you'll see that I have, uh, I bought a charging dock because I knew, you know, and an extra controller. Like, that controller that I bought is an extra one because the console is going to come with one. It's because I knew that, you know, even, even when I'm playing my PS4, sometimes, like, I play for a long, very long hours, and it dies on me, so I have a second controller always charging on the dock, and then I just switch them out, and I keep going, you know, when I have to play. So that's basically the same idea that I had for the PS5, and it looks like it was a good idea. So docks are out there, you guys. If you want them, you know, they're available. I don't think they're sold out everywhere, so try and get them, because they're definitely going to be sold out after this uh, um, information has come out. So, but yeah, definitely. Um, and it has a USB... C charge at the top. I mean, you can get a long wire and just plug it up to your console. I guess just play that way. But I don't really like playing with a wire. So ultimately, I think having another controller and just switching them out is the best option. Uh, it's more. It's very. Uh, it's costly, but it's basically what we got to do right now. So that's another thing that's kind of bogging down our rumors around the PlayStation Five. But it's this rumor is actually legit from what I can see. A lot of people are saying that the controller really does not last that long, at least not playing Astro's Playroom. It says up to maybe five hours, uh, somewhere around here, playing the, um, the Miles Morales game. So it did last a little bit longer, but Miles Morales didn't really use a lot of the, the it used some of the haptic feedback features, but it doesn't use all of the bells and whistles like Astro's Playroom does, because it's trying to show all that the controller can do. So basically if the PS5, um, other games that are coming out for the PS5 don't use that much, of the haptic feedback your controller will last a little bit longer but they do have to fix that in the future or come out with a new controller so that might be another problem there for the ps5 now another problem uh, i'm going over the little bits of problems like they're, they're problems but to me they're not they're not deal breakers if that makes sense so now uh nibble on uh, twitter i don't know if you guys follow him but basically a uh, GameSpot did this review or comparison between uh P playstation 5 and xbox series x load times like games loading in the screen how fast they load for you to play them and uh, nibble has a nice little condensed version right here so this is what i'm going with so they put a uh, red dead redemption 2 in an xbox series x and it lasted a minute and four seconds to fully load and play and then on the ps5 it was a minute and five seconds final fantasy was xbox series x was 48 seconds and on the ps5 was a whopping one minute and 10 seconds which i say whopping but it's just a big difference in that regard destiny 2 uh, the Xbox Series X was 42 seconds, PS5 was 57 seconds, um, Monster Hunter World, which is like a very big world, a very big game, um, I thought would take longer, but the Xbox Series X was 35 seconds, and the PS5 was 51 seconds, so really not that long, I don't think. And then the Arkham Knight game, uh, Xbox Series X was 58 seconds, and the PS5 was a minute and 7 seconds. Now to me, all of these are really fast, uh, especially for coming off of the PlayStation 4, or the Xbox One X, like, basically, to me, this is lightning speed, because I didn't used to play on computer. I know a lot of people, some people play on computer, so they, they're used to this kind of speed. Um, I'm not, so all of this is, to me, still very fast. Uh, the difference between, you know, Red Dead Redemption being one second doesn't really bother me. Even the Final Fantasy one, not really that bothersome, you know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. It's not that big of a deal for me, so this, to me, is not really a deal breaker, but just know that, um, basically, even though the PS5 supposedly has a, a higher I.O. speed, like, basically, it can process uh, stuff faster than the Xbox Series X. For some reason, uh, it, these games, which, again, are not uh, next-generation games, these are old-generation games, 
aren't being um, loaded fast enough on the PS5. And that might be a firmware update that they could fix so that that does happen for older games. And it might be that newer generation games are already set for that. So we don't really know because not a lot of people have tested the new generation games. And also Xbox doesn't really have a new generation game that they can test with this, if that makes sense. So like if Cyberpunk 2077, which is going to come out for both Xbox Series X and PS5, but it's not... It, they're gonna it's gonna be optimized for both but it's not specifically for like made for these consoles whereas like miles morales um and um astro's playroom are specifically made for ps5 we can't compare those load screens to like an xbox series x games because there's no comparison in an xbox series x right now um and that's to me another ding at xbox uh that they don't have a lot of games so even though they might have all of these things you know the the faster speed the controller the, the controller that lasts longer because again they're using double a batteries and um and it might, uh, and again, not the, the overheating issue is not a problem. So basically, the, the, it has all, all of the good positive stuff, but the problem is there's no games that you really want to take advantage of with this new console. Like all these games you can play on the PS5 and still play the newer games that are only on PS5. So that's to me is still not a deal breaker if you're thinking about either two consoles. All right, moving forward. I'm trying to do this fast. <laughs> um, the next one is uh, the PS5 does not have the uh, quick resume game swapping feature that the Xbox Series X does. So if you guys don't know what quick resume is, it's like um, if you well if you have a Switch, I can't to the Switch. I feel like the Switch really started this a little bit. But basically, um, on your Switch, if you turn off your game, you know, any point in the game, you can turn it off and the game will just pause and stay there, kind of at rest mode. And then you can just turn your Switch back on and play from where you left off. Um, at least it, when it's on rest mode. You can't turn off the console and then that happens. So it's kind of the same concept with Xbox Series X, except it has it for multiple games. So, for example, you can stop playing Call of Duty and just pause it and then quick resume and put uh, Batman Arkham and start playing Batman Arkham, pause that game, go to Dirt 5, then go to Force of Four, and then all these games are on the same time, um, basically just paused, and whenever you want to go to another game, let's say I want to go back all the way to Call of Duty from, you know, Dirt 5, I'll play in Dirt 5, I go all the way back to Call of Duty, and it's right back where I left off, and it takes maybe 10 seconds for it to load back on. So that is the quick resume feature that PlayStation 5 won't have. So basically you'll have, let's say you're playing Astro's Playroom, and you want to go from Astro's Playroom to Miles Morales, then you have to basically exit uh, the game fully and then go into the uh, Miles Morales game and then you have to wait for the load screen and then finally play the game. So it's a little bit different, but again, the speed that these games are loading, to me, it's not that much of a deal breaker. So, and also this is something that at launch the PS5 won't have, but again, they can fix it with an update because the speed is there in the console. It's just like the features they have to get you know, to fix, and I don't know, maybe they weren't ready for the launch, but basically they can't back down now, so it's going to launch, and then hopefully in the future we'll get an update, and these things will come, you know, as uh, time progresses. But for right now, the PlayStation 5 doesn't have the quick resume feature, but the Xbox does, but again, it'd be great if the PlayStation had it, because there's more games that you want to play on there than the Xbox to switch between, but we'll get to that later. All right. Uh, whew, what else? 1440p. So, this one to me is not a deal breaker for me, but I, like, I know a lot of people that play on, uh, on um, gaming monitors instead of televisions. I play on a television. So, if you play on a gaming monitor, the PlayStation 5 is not going to support 1440p natively. Um, the Xbox Series X does. So, basically, that means, like, most monitors resolutions go, uh, 1440p is a, like a regular monitor resolution. Most of them have that. Um, and so it's really, it doesn't make sense to me why the play, PlayStation 5 doesn't have that, at least not, not natively, not at launch. Like, basically, it's a resolution that is encompassed in the PlayStation 5. Like, it, it, it can achieve 1440p. It just doesn't have it. So, for gaming monitors, for some reason, like, basically, if you want to get up to a gaming monitor, it's, the resolution's always 4K. You can't, like, switch it down to 1440p to, to meet, you know, the, the screen's demands. So, I just, I find that strange. But allegedly, again, PlayStation or Sony is saying that they're going to, you know, later on have a firmware update where they will include 1440p, hopefully, so that you can use it in your gaming monitor. But right now it doesn't. But this definitely is 
or might be a game breaker of a console not buying, you know, thing, the deal breaker for some people that, you know, want to play on a monitor and, you know, stream that way and stuff like that. Like, you know, I, I don't know why Sony didn't think of this, you know, in an age of streaming and, and, and basically they're sending PlayStation 5s to streamers. So I don't understand why they didn't think maybe some streamers have 1440p, you know, uh, <laughs> the computers and they want to stream it on their computers. Anyway, I don't know what the foresight was, you know, where the foresight was for that one, but definitely a deal breaker if you were planning on getting it for a monitor that, you know, can only support up to 1440p. Now, um, again, this is from Nibble. Uh, this is just a screen cap of the PlayStation 5's storage, which I just want to go over this before we go over the other part of the storage, which again, might be a deal breaker for some people, but will be fixed in the future, um, hopefully. So the console storage, um, if you take away all of the stuff that's already going to be included, so there is some games and apps like Astro's Playroom and some other apps that are going to be already downloaded onto the console when you get it, as well as some other stuff in the background. So all of this is going to take up some of the storage. So you're going to have more or less 666.2 uh, gigabytes or 646.7 gigabytes of space available for you to be able to download games and put games onto the PlayStation 5. And that's just natively, internally into the PS5. Now, the problem is <laughs> that you won't be able to expand your um, PS5's internal SSD at launch. So remember the little notch that I showed you where you're going to be able to just open your PlayStation 5 up and put the SSD MBME drive? Basically, they're, they're not allowing people to do that yet. So there is going to be an update in the future, even though they didn't give like a timeline of when, um, there will be an update in the future that you can put the NVMe in there and it'll the PS5 will accept it and it'll work with your games and stuff. But right now, there isn't. So you have to wait for Sony's signal. We have to wait for Sony to basically allow this NVMe SSD drive to work. But right now it won't work. Um, at launch, at least. And we don't know when it'll work. They haven't given a date or a timeline for that. But hopefully it'll be either sometime by Christmas or after Christmas. Because a lot of people are going to get a lot of games, hopefully by that time, especially during Black Friday. And Cyberpunk 2077 comes out in December, so and that's a big game. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what they're planning to do with, you know, basically the stores that we have internally. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, that's fine. Because if I download any games... I'll just upload my PS5 games, like Miles Morales, if I download the whole game, um, you know, Call of Duty or whatever, what have you. I'm just going to, you know, upload that onto an external hard drive, and then I'll have space in my internal SSD. No, you will not. So, um, <laughs> so uh, there's a catch. You currently, uh, as again, at launch, cannot use external hard drives to store any PlayStation 5 games. Even on the suitably, like if you have a super speedy external SSD that costs $800 or $900 or $1,000, you can only move PS4 titles onto an external uh, hard drive right now, not PS5 games. So, you'll need to keep all of your PS5 games that you want to install on the 667.2 gigabyte internal storage, basically the storage that comes with the PS5. So, again, not very consumer friendly not very friendly to people that are getting the ps5 really ultimately because it's like you know basically that means i can only have like two games on my console at a time and that's it because you know ps5 games because it's like you know what am i going to do you know so ultimately this to me is a big misfire the fact that the console comes with 825 gigabytes but we're only going to be able to use 667.2 variably uh, uh, of, of, of it and even that is too small I just it's a lot like memory like I said is very important for us to play games and download these games and, and especially if you have the digital version of the PlayStation 5 I can only I shudder to think you know I, the, the, the decisions you're gonna have to make as far as what games to play and what games not to play and again this would be uh, really this is already already bad but it would be a little bit better if we knew when we'd be able to use the um, ex inter the internal uh, the other internal SSD drive that we can buy to put into the PS5 or a patch so that you can put PS5 games into external hard drives 
So I don't know when Sony's going to fix these things, but at launch, so far, these things aren't there. At least in the PS5s that these uh, people are reviewing. Maybe in the PS5s that consumers are going to get there, they're, they're there, but Sony hasn't come out and said that, so I don't think that they're going to be there. So ultimately, that's it. Um, again, uh, the only cons I can think for the Xbox Series X, because Xbox Series X, again, has all of those things. It has the ability to have internal, you know, uh, for you to use the external hard drive to download games onto, whether it be Xbox Series X games or older. And um, it has, you know, its own proprietary external SSD, one terabyte, that yes, it's $220, but you know which one you're going to get, and you know which one it is, and you, you know it's going to fit in your Xbox, and you know it's going to work. And again, it's another terabyte of space. And also, the Xbox Series X itself comes with a terabyte of space, even again, you're not going to be using a terabyte. You might be using like 800 or so, 900, 800 gigabytes. But that's still more than what, you know, PlayStation 5 is giving you. The only thing I can say about the Xbox Series X is the controller is not that much different. Um, and there's no games, really, for the Xbox Series X. That's the only two cons I can think of. Other than that, the Xbox Series X has uh, appar apparently more speed so far than the PS5. Um, it does have 20% more power, like, you know, internally with, you know, the teraflops and all that stuff. Um, it, uh, has the quick resume, has, uh, 1440p for gaming, um, you know, just uh, the controller lasts longer, like, just a bunch of stuff that I, you know, I assume PlayStation would have or think of, you know, before this stuff happens, but it doesn't. So, ultimately, again, to me, still, PlayStation 5 is the way to go, at least right now. Because I want to play new games, and the new games, to me, are coming out on the PlayStation 5 consoles. This is not counting remakes, and not counting third-party games. So, again, new exclusive games are coming to the PlayStation 5 that I would like to play, and that's why I'm still for the PlayStation 5 a little bit more than the Xbox, but it's really brought it down now so that I understand if you want to get an Xbox, you should, and if it's between those two, I definitely understand your choice to get an Xbox with the affordable price and uh, all the bells and whistles that I mentioned before that it has that the PlayStation doesn't have. I do understand. If Miles Morales, you know, the new Spider-Man game and the uh, Astro's Playroom isn't your deal or any other exclusive, Demon Souls and all this other stuff, um, then I'd understand why you would go that route, at least for now. Also, if you could get the Xbox All Access, you know, $35 a month, you know, still great deal. So I understand. Um, to me, still, PlayStation exclusives, trump all of this stuff uh -huh. funny that i used that word today but uh yeah so basically um that's the gist of what i gotta tell you guys um to keep you guys up to date the launch is this week for both the xbox series x november 10th and the playstation 5 november 12th so keep that in mind we're we're really in the grind in the gears and i could really use uh, some games to play right now because I have not slept for four days and now I can finally sleep like a baby knowing that we're we're back on track. All right. All right. That's uh, that's all. Hope you guys like this video. If you found this useful skill useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing. I do a lot of videos like this. And again, unboxing video coming sometime this week.